Mike O'Mara, Radio Entertainment. <laughs> oh, I got to play the music. I was making myself laugh. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. I was yelling at Dan and I made myself laugh. There I was apologize. a sense of urgency. I think, I think fine. you were prompting him. The yelling is a stretch. And it was a reminder. Hey, why do we have Dan? Why do we have Dan O'Brien after Pony finally came back to work after a month? He's uh, uh, uh um, Pony's working on some network training. Okay, do you have to play some stuff, Rob? I do. His name is Dude Walker, and he sounds like this. You can listen to the Mike O'Mara Show at MikeOMaraShow.com. Let's get started. It's the Mike O'Mara Show with Mike O'Mara, Oscar Santana, and Rob Spiewak. Now, here's Mike. From St. Peter's Village, Pennsylvania, Marfa, Texas, Haifa, Israel, Gig Harbor, Washington, Istanbul, Turkey, and Milan, Milan, Italy. (laughs) The Mike O'Mara Show is on now. We are delighted to have you along on a beautiful Wednesday. Uh, Yeah, another trip for... Another, how many people say that online now? Another trip around the sun. I so genuinely hate that. I hate that. That's my least favorite one, too. Yeah, I'm old. I'm uh, 63. Uh, I had to hesitate because I really wanted to play the Beatles song, but I'll just have to wait if I live till next year uh, when I'm 64. Why you do can't you have do to that. say you it like cheat. that? What do you mean? If you live till next year. Well, I mean, yeah, I'm just joking, uh, sort of. That's there, there'll grim. be a little bit of that in the show today. There's a uh, there's a health test. There's that, another uh, Beatles song we could play about. for you, Mike. What's that? Yeah, happy birthday. Thank you. Thank Paul, you very much. Paul Woo! played this on his most recent Woo! tour. He's 80 now. Did he say anything about... <laughs> God, he is. <laughs> he didn't say, if That's... I make it to 81. <laughs> Bill, you still need me when I'm 80. No, what he Um, did at the beginning of the show is he said, Dan, Dan. Dan, would you like to, Dan O'Brien, would you like to wish your hero a happy birthday? Mike, happy birthday. (laughs) Clever. All right. um, So thank you, Dan. Love it. We are, uh, we're here. We're queer. We're not going skiing. No. Um. Yeah. So uh, another another year, a uh, a very nice uh, birthday morning with uh, Carla brought me some flowers. No treats. And no pastry flowers. treats. That's she sweet. is. Uh, she got me some shorts. Uh, really nice uh, shorts that are in a smaller size. Which oh, you is got the chubbies. Fun. I uh, I was not a Greg Norman guy, and I'm not a live golf guy, but uh, I really have never been in the Greg Norman zone, and I am now, so I'm wearing my Greg Norman shorts Are they today, high? which is fine. Uh, they're, they're, they're about a little, little, uh, little over the knee. If you, get a little, totally. if you get a little heavier, you are Faldoey. What's that mean? You're like Nick Faldo, but you're Doey. Sir Nick. It's, yeah, Sir oh, Nick okay. Faldo, the uh, the one that just couldn't stand working with Jim Nance anymore. Hey, Nick, come so. back. <laughs> yeah, but the new <laughs> shorts, the new short cut for men is like a lot of thigh these days. Not in my wheelhouse. Okay. I don't. Uh, I don't think that. And I these think are you're cutoffs talking, that you got. Uh, yeah, they're jean cutoffs. <laughs> and I'm going tubing later. Nice. Now Shannon's purchased some of these shorts, and I was like, eh, it might be too a little too revealing for for your boy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but as yeah, long I don't as like, Carla's uh, not, you know, Carla knows what you like, and you got. What I you don't like, like short. I don't like those. I, they're too. It's it's right in between. I don't like the uh, cargo shorts uh, on shorter men. You will see the regular golf shorts that go over the knee, and that's a silly look. And then the men that, yeah, but you don't see it that much. Although I was on the phone with my daughter. Yes. <laughs> sitting outside of where I work out and saw a man walk in. He was not wearing shorts. He was wearing sweatpants with just the most beautiful colored teal muscle tank top Mm. uh but he was older and uh and he just looked he stopped me i said that's an interesting looking man striking or Uh, um, in shape tremendously in shape oh yeah yeah, yeah, and perhaps a future friend of yours a future lover perhaps (laughs) perhaps it sounds like it but he was just uh, you know uh yeah it looked like he might be in the life uh which was fascinating to me because 
the color palette was uh, was one that you don't see on some of the old farts down here. So I was just, uh, I'm, I'm literally in a conversation. You're wearing I am teal. In He's a conversation. Teal. Yeah, this shirt yeah. looks, re- I was shocked. That doesn't look I'm- teal to me because no. the cameras are all. Gotcha. F- but it looked really well, good on the F-top. screen. Well, they're not It's from perspective for you. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, for me. Yeah. His vision uh, by is the way, going. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you very you much. <laughs> so, um, yeah, getting back to the whole uh, thing he stopped me as I was talking, and I just had a wonderful conversation with daughter number one, and uh, hopefully uh, around midnight, Catherine will leave me a voicemail. Um, you know, because she's just she's a creature of the night. She's been nocturnal since she went to yeah. the workforce. Ever since well, I thought Catherine oh, would be daughter number one. Well, Catherine's daughter number one, and then Elizabeth's daughter number that two. That's a right. Freudian slip. Yeah, I see. It oh, is stop heart, that. Number one. Stop that. Elizabeth. I love both of them equally. Yes. I love all my children the same. Just like the Dutton all boys. The, <laughs> yeah. No, this is not a Jamie situation. Uh, Rob, remember when we called you Jamie the other day? Yes, uh, yes. It was very the, flattering. Uh, Poised and disappointing. Uh, Rob is Jamie. Oscar's Casey. Uh, what, did we, what did we decide uh, Pony was? Pony with, was uh, the newly born calf. <laughs> <laughs> That's a Yellowstone reference. Yes. That's very cool. So, uh, of all, look, I can't tell you how many nice people uh, reach out, and it matters. And for and it, for all, did of anyone us, yell this to you, it. Mike? Did anyone yell? It. Hey everyone, here comes the cake. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Bonanza. Happy birthday to you. Worst Happy writing. Birthday, oh, horrible and horribly acted. Worst acting and writing in the history Happy of uh, TV dramas. This is from you. Bonanza. Hey. Lauren Green, the Patriot. Ben Cartwright. Boys, right. <laughs> That's him. Just don't know what to say. I'm overwhelmed. This is what all the secrecy was about. We've been planning it for weeks, Pa. Took a little bit of doing, too, Pa. <laughs> well, I, I appreciate it. I, but what? why this particular day? Because it's your birthday. <laughs> oh, Adam, we all know my birth records were lost. I, I've never known my birth date. Well, we do now. Took a lot of letter writing, but <laughs> we finally traced the daughter of your old family minister, who had recorded it also. <laughs> it's, it's wonderful. Real thoughtful of you fellas. I've always missed having a regular birthday. <laughs> yes. Uh... How, how old am I? Oh, you'd be surprised, Pa. Oh, dear. Yeah, that's what I'm afraid of. <laughs> Fellas, how about a song in honor of Pa? No, oh, wait a minute, wait a no, minute. no. There's something I'd, I'd like to say. Well, maybe I can say it best in this song. I was living in a devil town. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren Green. Yeah, the who, and our be- Rob and I were talking before the show, the best line. Who had recorded it also. The daughter of an old uh, family minister who had recorded uh, it also. That's Lauren Green, Ben Cartwright, uh, Michael Landon as... Uh, Little Joe. It? Little Joe, Joe Cartwright, and Dan Blocker as Hoss Cartwright. Do you know that after Dan Blocker passed, his son continued to get work on Little House on the Prairie from Michael Landon? Mm. I had no idea. Was he big like his daddy? Yeah, you could tell who it was. You absolutely could. Really? You yeah. could say, so he's a big strapping mm-hmm. guy? Yeah. Well, mm-hmm. that's wonderful. Uh, so right before the show, is, I, I've, I've got, I haven't responded to a lot of text messages, um, but right before the show, I see Jimmy sent a movie. And so and so I, tur- I turn it on. Softcore? And there, <laughs> there's this these fingers on this old piano. Uh, that play Happy Birthday, and it's Jimmy. It's no, Jimmy. let me really. I'll put it. I'll just. I'll play it on my please, phone. please. Okay, so let's see if we can. Uh, we can get this to uh, to go through here. Okay, all right. <laughs> I love when an old I've piano. I've never gotten that I from love Jimmy. Him. I love when an old piano sounds like chimes. It's I've just so. G is. I didn't know Jimmy played the piano. Well, he that clearly so does it. Play that again. <laughs> well, he does a little bit. Yeah. He, you know, oh, that was like little God. Michael ten lessons ago. He hunts and pecks. 
He did. You know, you just never know with him where he's, he's gonna such a just beautiful, bring, bring like yeah. total. Mm-hmm. Like he is. Everybody should have. It, they should be lucky enough to have a Jimmy Cerrito. In their yeah. <laughs> you know, Alan Goodman. You know the character Charlie Stewag, Stabilag. Alan Goodman once said to uh, Don and myself on the Don and Mike show, "Every show should have a Charlie." Uh, but it was, every show should have a Jimmy. <laughs> and by the way, at that time, every show had kind of the. Yeah. <laughs> you know, we had well, that. I liked the <laughs> days of morning radio when there was a cast of 14 on yeah, a radio yeah, show. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. But it was nice. And then uh, our old friend Cappy Pfeiffer uh, called and uh, we chatted for a good long time. And, uh, you know, it was just uh, I made a little contact with people I haven't spoken to in a long time. It was great. So all in all, really, really good. I'm very, very happy. And, uh you know, even though I waited two hours and fifteen minutes to get an oil change, uh, you know, I'm still uh, I'm still doing really, was really well. Was it the uh, Jiffy type dealership or another type dealership? No, it's a dealership. It was a car dealership. Okay. It's where I where I got the car. So, uh, you know, uh, Rolls Royces, to- Rob. <laughs> Rolls Royces. You know, it's not just an oil change. They check the points and they no, rotate the tires. You're out, it's you know. good your to patronize outfit, the dealership. Your though. outfit uh, covers everything, right? For like a hundred thousand miles. What's that? The Genesis. Uh, I don't know if it's a hundred thousand. Is it a hundred thousand? Because it was free I, today. It is like it was free is, today. They have an aggressive service in in just like here I you thought, go. Buy this car. Thought, we'll take care of everything. I thought I read on the contract twelve thousand miles or a year that they'll do. Did but you lease maybe it? maybe it's true. Huh? Lease it or buy it? I bought it. Okay, there might be, you might have a longer warranty yeah. than that. But I mean, I, I, I could be wrong. I, I didn't know, and you know what? I also didn't know what? Uh, that uh, when he said an hour and forty five minutes, it was going to be two and a half hours. Gee, yeah, that's that's, right. that's missing it no, by right. quite a bit because an hour so forty five is no guy, bargain. This guy is really really nice, and we chat. And uh, I said, "Well, this is a great first experience going into your uh, dealership." And then uh, an hour, two hours goes by. Then it's two hours and fifteen seconds. How's their waiting there. room? How's their waiting room? Do they have any uh, accoutrements was, for you? Uh, yeah, they had coffee and they had uh, like uh, cheatable snacks. Okay, as I told you yes. on the text that I, yeah. they had stroopwafels. I give them credit. I uh, I fell off the wagon today. Oh, it's badly. A, it's a, you got you got a birthday call from Jimmy. You said someone else called you. Uh, yeah, but I mean it was all on my own, and I was taking my kid to his uh, little golf you uh, school. Yeah, and I was like taking my car in, and so in between after. I worked out. So not only this is how the day started with the cheating with food. Uh, I'm in. They have two separate waiting rooms. One that was very sparse, and then I had I wasn't aware that the other one where was where all the uh, the Hyundai and Genesis people hang out, and that they had everything. They had coffee, and they had a snack layout, and they had a coffee machine that made specialty coffees maybe and my, all that. Maybe the the sparse waiting room is like the high dollar slots room at a casino. Was there a rope in front of it? There was a coffee machine, and then there was a TV that was uh, up against a black background. I didn't even know there was a TV there. So a lady comes around the corner and says, hello, uh, is there anything I can get you? I said, yeah, I'm about to pour myself a cup of coffee. She said, well, we have a butter butter machine uh, around the corner, and we also have snacks. I'm like, all right. I figured I was going to be there for uh, an hour and a half. I'll go snacks just to look. And then I had a latte. And then with my latte, I noticed that they have uh, a little confection that I'm quite fond of. I've rarely talked about it on the show, but they had a uh, a biscotti, yes, uh, wrapped in a little uh, you know plastic wrapper, and like you would that's get on an I airplane, like when yeah. you get on an airplane, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. And then I broke the dam, and then uh, I noticed when I went up to. <laughs> get something else yes because i've broken it i've broken i i've fallen off it's yeah. like a heroin addict sure if that was alcohol and i was in one of those movies i'd be like you know walking into the boardroom meeting at 10 o'clock in the morning going yeah i don't understand i would be denzel washington inverting that plane mm. that's what i would be doing okay. i am your car uh, yeah. your genesis is ready mickey rourke mickey yeah. rourke <laughs> uh, have it <laughs> delivered to the house yeah <laughs> so i go and i see Hello. And uh, so I grab one, and then, you know, you can't just eat one. It's like no. potato chips. Well, how right? many are there in a pack? Well, there was not a pack. It was just one it individually. Was open for grazing. It was fun, individually wrapped Struppwaffel. And at boy. this point, there's a lady on my right who's <laughs> noticeably prickly. 
Okay, okay. is that the way I would describe it, sure. right? Yeah. Just kind of not you doing anything. You can tell anything. when someone's in a bad mood. Yeah. Somebody's just yeah. prickly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was self-conscious for absolutely no reason whatsoever. Was she and giving finally, you the eye because you think? No. Okay. No, I just, I wasn't even, I was so shy and bashful that I wasn't even looking at her, you know, but I just felt the vibe and I said, mm, I really shouldn't go. That's so piggish to go up and get another. Yeah. You're hungry. You've broken the dam. Yeah. And I went out and got a second Stroop You should. You bought an automobile from these people. They owe you. Uh, so, <laughs> so then uh, I go out after two hours and 15 minutes. Right. Uh, I say to the guy, uh, just just wanted to get an update. You said uh, an hour and 45, maybe uh, maybe 11 a.m., maybe uh, you right. know, two hours. He said, oh, hold on a second. So he says, I'll be back in a couple of minutes. So he goes back, and I'm just standing. He says, stay right here. Stay right here. So I stay right there. And as he goes up, I don't have anything to look at. I'm looking on his desk. And I see on his desk my keys on a uh, sales thing. Right. And I'm like, okay, so he's checking it, but how would they get the car if the car? Yeah. I don't know. I'm not thinking about it. At this point, the guy from the shop comes back, not the service advisor. And the guy from the shop goes, there it is. And he smashes his finger down because he's pissed. Yeah. Right there, that's where it's been. And apparently this thing's been sitting there for uh, a decent chunk of time. Oh, no. The so keys, I don't know how long the it was. Order, but they just mislaid the, it? The, the fact that, no, they returned my oh. car. My car was done. Done. And yeah. and so, but he was a super nice guy. And I and we chatted a little bit. And then I, I took off. Then it's down to uh, work out. Have a nice conversation with Cappy as I'm driving down, and then at the at the conclusion of uh, working out, in my brain, I remembered our conversation yesterday regarding uh, DQ. Yes, and that they had fantastic burgers. There is a DQ highly rated. I think this was actually the bonus show. Yeah, bonus point of show. order. Point of order. Was it really? Yeah, yeah because because we uh, we use the list about the You've top. You've been burgers. fantasizing about this for some yeah, time this, now. Yeah, this dates back to Friday. Yeah. Why did I think it was yesterday? Because I'm 63 and I'm losing it. You know, I'm losing my uh, buttons. Why, I, like I, why are my keys on this no, counter? I, I don't know. I've been thinking about the Blizzard Dairy Queen burger combo mm. for some time as well. I didn't go there. Oh, because I'd had the biscotti and the strawberry. Don't waffle. go there. And I, I'd had the biscotti and the Stroop waffles, plural. Where would so you go? So I didn't then? go there. Oh, I think the Germans, if they, if they pluralized it, Germans would call it Stroop waffling. Did you go to the number one on the list? Oh, the no. butter burger? The butter burger. No, no, I didn't go to Culver's. You did That's go the to DQ. Burger. The butter burger, I just said I went to DQ. Well, Oscar's listen trying to, to learn. No, listen you know, to me. Oscar no, thinks that you didn't in go that, to DQ. What? Yeah. Oscar, I, I, I went to Dairy you, Queen. I went to right, Dairy Queen. Yeah, right. And top five, top three. That That's good. how good it is. Yes. Above, above, Not well, too much well above average. Now, listen, I haven't gone with the burger and fries in a very long time. Months. Yeah. Well, the it's fries been, have to be judged separately, too, though. But, but just on the burger alone, fantastic. What were the toppings and, it came with, or what did you uh, order? Lettuce, tomato, uh, pickle. And uh, I believe a little ketchup. Nice. I'm not sure what else Good was job. on there. Uh, I had to make a tough U-turn coming out of the DQ, that, and that pissed me off, you know, because it's a when you go when you get that food, you know this from going to a fast food place, and you're you're wanting to ingest it as quickly as possible. You think two things are happening: everybody's against you, everybody's trying to, you know. I thought for sure when I had a quarter of this burger in my greasy little paw as I'm driving back home that there was a lady. That was in a Camry that was next to me that was matching my fucking speed. Oh, I dear. swear hold. to God. So she could watch me eat. Hold the phone. Yes. You're driving and eating a burger? Mm hmm. Sure. Mm hmm. That's no, you got yeah, it. You got it. It was park. two o'clock. It was like 10 of two. It was you 10 of two. Drive I drive and eat a here. burger? That's the messiest thing around. Not if you're I, good at I, it. Not a mark. Not, not, not a boy. How do you accomplish that? I'm skilled. I'm skilled. I know how to eat a burger. I know how to keep it in the paper. I was going to say, I know you how to nibble it, it around the edges, and I don't attack it. Mm. You know, I don't eat it like uh, you know with massive bites. I I nibble it like one of your rats. <laughs> you gnaw. I, I, I've never, never in my life would I, I ever take think- small bites, and I and I go around the perimeter of the burger, and I hold the at least one quarter to one half of the burger 
in the paper this that is, it's wrapped in. Uh, my mind is blown. This is a true fat man trade craft. This is great yes, stuff. Yeah, absolutely. And I've by done the way, it a million times. Not not one of the more challenging burgers, and it was a double cheeseburger. So because it's it your was birthday. Lar- because it's my birthday. Because <laughs> it's my birthday. <laughs> Here comes the cake. <laughs> Carla's gonna be pissed. Birthday or not, she's you say pissed. burgers are hard to eat in the car. I tell you that they're not. You know what is hard is ribs. <laughs> ribs. <laughs> Rob, when he would eat his full rack of baby back ribs <laughs> with his fingers, <laughs> dainty. Oh, yeah. <laughs> By the way, you know, he came, he'd come up to an intersection and they think he somebody he's murdered somebody in the yeah, car. Yeah, it looked horrible with all the with all the horrible barbecue sauce. <laughs> it was What's horrible. <laughs> oh god, we got to get our guy on. Yeah, right, we do. Sorry about this. Sorry. That's all, right. Uh, all right, enough about. We'll get more. We've got a lot on the show today. We've got a carry under the knife update. Yes. We have a Rob Health update. Mm-hmm. We have an Oscar Rat update, mm-hmm. and uh, more fun Rat-cast. and more thrills coming up. But now it's time for our talking head. Uh, this is uh, Rob told me this person's been on. The first, second time talking head, he was on with you guys when I wasn't around, mm-hmm. and uh, and there we go. Just put him right in before I even do the. Someday, someday we will manage to do this like a regular program. We've got you know, I mean, Dan it's O'Brien a, on the other side. Yes, New I know. Guy. Hi, Dan. Uh, this Hi, is Mike. Mike Oppenheim. Mike is our first return talking head. I just mentioned that because he uh, has a story to tell. Uh, Mike found us while Googling Oscar Santana. And uh, he's been a podcast listener since episode one. He is married, second time, attaboy, uh, (laughs) to Ilana. They've been married a couple of years. Alice is their 11-month-old daughter. Wonderful. They live in Phoenix, Arizona. Great town. Oh, man. Where uh, he works as a book indexer. I'll find out about that. Uh, he has previously worked as a musician, filmmaker, author, and is currently hosting a podcast called Coffin Talk. I love oh, it. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, in his spare time, Mike eats avocados. <laughs> The whole tray. <laughs> anyway, uh, facilitates writing workshops and hangs with his family. His favorite thing about TMOS, he loves when we approach the nexus of mean and sincere. Mm-hmm. Oh, see, I don't think he's a minority in that group. No, but, I I cer- that. But, I all, but I certainly think there is a counter group when it comes to that. Oh, yeah. Yes. You softies know what I'm talking about. All right. Sometimes you've got to tell it like it is. That's just the way it works. I like him already. And uh, Mike want, once went to Ecuador and did ayahuasca. Ooh, this is it. Awesome. Four times. <laughs> oh, wow. Intrigue. You should be. Here is Mike uh, Oppenheim. Hi, Mike. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited. I, I got to lead with the end. Yeah. I got to get right to the <laughs> that ayahuasca. That was the surprise. Well, that was the surprise, that, you know? Well, because we were talking about it and I was watching. Yep. That's when I I did a little dive on uh, Joe Rogan mm-hmm. and Ron White, right? The yeah. comedian, uh, Ron White, who Tater was talking. Salad. Uh, not that, no, Bennington. <laughs> I say, I do, uh, Fezzi, I'm going to do ayahuasca. <laughs> Yes. I went down to the uh, Philippines. I licked the toad, Fez. Oh, man. It's very fezzy. Fe- fe- fezzy. Look at uh, that. They, take these toads. They, uh, they dip these toads in water and they boil it, Fezzy. It's, uh, it's great. It's just going to get tripping. Anyway, um, so four times ayahuasca. So uh, recently or when did you uh, not- do that? Well, I did it the first three times I did it was in one like five day period in Ecuador in 2017. And then I recently did it again with my wife and I only did it once with her. Um, so, that was her request. Your new wife. <laughs> yes, Ron, new wife. when I was watching Rogan, uh, Ron uh, White talks about uh, a lady that uh, wigged out and some people get uh, pretty ill, uh, vomit on mm. it. And uh, what was your personal experience? Uh, well, if you did it four times as so. well. I loved it. Uh, did you, what was the experience like? Well, okay. So first off, just the giant disclaimer, uh, I am not here to like express the belief that people should do this drug or really? that it's, you know. Yeah, you're like, not advocating. You're, no. saying you're going yeah, to yeah. yes. I'm here to share an experience. That's all. I am definitely not a, 
person who uh, proselytizes it. So, and you were um, legal when you did it because you were in Ecuador. Yes. Okay. And I've done it legally only, and that's also important. And that's why I'm more than happy to come on and talk about it. Um, okay. Also, the the fourth time I did it was because my wife wanted to do it. I was set after three to not do it again. Oh, okay. So you, <laughs> yeah. you know, you're not here Fire saying, beware. man, you must. So you. No. Uh, so what uh, of the four times? Obviously, you have a first and a last time, and a couple in the middle. Uh, what was what was the experience like, and were there any great moments or any scary moments? Um, my life is so much better because I did ayahuasca, <laughs> and I'm so thankful that I did it. It is the most important decision I made at the time I made it. But with that, there's a caveat, which is it. It is a drug for sure, but it's more of an experience than a drug. And the way I would relate that is like getting drunk is just getting drunk. That's a drug. But if you drink with your friends and you at a after a funeral to like celebrate the dead, that's more of like an experience in which alcohol is a part of that. And that's how I would relate ayahuasca is that. OK, I'm with you. I, I'm following. I'm following with this. Uh, I have to get right to when you talk about one of the most important decisions you've made. Uh, ayahuasca can be used for. A variety of reasons. Obviously, there may have been some reasons that you were doing it, correct? Correct. Um, I was going, I had just gotten through a divorce and I'd spent six months as a part time single dad. So my ex wife and I were sharing our child and splitting the weeks. Um, okay. To tell the story, I have to kind of, I have to tell it in a certain order or else it won't make sense. Please take so your time. I'm fascinated. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Absolutely yeah. riveting. Right, okay. Go ahead. This is just like so Pulp Fiction. We're ready to believe <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, so I was always interested in taking ayahuasca because I had heard from people. It's phenomenal. It'll change your life. Mm-hmm. And I'm just one of those people. Tried acid in college, tried shrooms in college. Why not? I'll try something right. once. And especially when I hear intelligent people talk about it. And that's very important. I had heard like intelligent men and women say this experience helped me, blah, 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 blah. So after a divorce, as you I, I, from listening to you, I'm going to say, you know, so that's, of me, course, you know. I, I related um, to what yeah. you were saying a moment ago about you, uh, um, doing the, the part-time dad thing. Yeah. You, you see therapy, you know, you seek therapy. You need to figure out what part of the horrible calamity of the divorce was your fault and what part was the other person's oh, fault. So that I'm you with can, you. you know, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So I decided ayahuasca might be like a shortcut to that. Um, and it was, um, so I uh, flew to Ecuador and it was a, it was a vacation package. Like there's all these resorts in Ecuador. There's, um, there's not resorts in Bolivia, Oscar, but it is like available yes. there. Yes, um, yes, yeah, correct, correct. It's just people don't really go there for tourism right now. Yes, so, they don't go um, there if they're from there either. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's just so, uh, a little scary place to be right yeah. now. Mm-hmm. So Brazil, Peru, and Ecuador are the three places where people usually go on these tourist packages. So I booked a package, um, and it was for three sessions in five days. So I wasn't like really doing it three times so much as one session, which was three. Um, all three experiences were so similar and same, like part of the same result that I'm just going to kind of talk about them as if it was one, okay. um, dissecting them would be minutia that no one would care about. So you're doing a great um, job. I, I, I love yeah, okay. this. This is go. Yeah, go ahead. All right, cool. So I flew into Ecuador, everything that could possibly go wrong, went wrong. It was like the hardest trip ever. I was taking six flights. I had to change all the stuff and it's because of it was before COVID, but it was just getting to this small town in Ecuador was very hard. And, uh, one of the reasons that the trip was hard is that before you do ayahuasca, they tell you very strongly to follow the ayahuasca diet for two straight weeks. And the ayahuasca, <clears throat> the ayahuasca diet is basically white rice, fish, olive oil, eggs, raw nuts, and plantains. Yeah. That's, that's it. That's like every, <laughs> every Sunday at my mom's house. <laughs> <laughs> So, wow. Not bad bananas. except for the plantains. I'm not much oh, bigger than the yeah, yeah. Oh, starchy bananas. Oh, plantains. Mm. <laughs> so actually, because of uh, where I live and everything, I did forgo the starchy bananas um, <laughs> for the diet. But um, I did eat the rest of it very consistently for two weeks. And I'm going to mention this now because I said it's out of order. I am the only person I know who has not thrown up on ayahuasca mm. all four times. And I'm also the only person I know who followed the ayahuasca diet. So, oh, Okay. Got it. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, Do they mention to you that following by following the ayahuasca diet, that is perhaps going to minimize any uh, gastrointestinal distress that you might be under when you take the, uh, you know, the the, the concoction? 
They do recommend that. They more importantly say, and this is where it gets esoteric and hippie, but you have to respect the medicine. It's not um, of this earth. It is beyond what we comprehend and have in our conceptual structures. It's, again, if you've done magic mushrooms or you've done uh, acid, even if you smoked pot, you've changed your state of consciousness. You know that like things are not always what they seem, mm -hmm. that we have consciousness when we wake up, consciousness when we dream, consciousness on drugs, even alcohol, it lowers your consciousness, but it still changes it. So may I offer a piece of advice also not related to what you're talking about, but uh, a similar piece of advice I would offer to people who are going to Epcot uh, in Walt <laughs> Disney World and are planning to ride Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind. Do not eat in the Mexico Pavilion prior to that. There you go. That's all. That's what I have. What if for you, you had? What if that. you had stuck to the ayahuasca diet before you rode that ride? <laughs> I still would have sprayed rice. Yeah, all you would have been wall. in the Epcot like Vision of Tomorrow, and raw it's, nuts would be everywhere. Be horrible. <laughs> so you do this, and uh, and I we digress there for a second. Just oh, yeah. continue. Okay, so um, so following the diet to me is very important. The other thing I just want to mention is if you're on MAO inhibitors, of which I'm not, but if you're on them, you certainly know you are, you cannot take those before you do it. So there's a certain class of people who, if you need to take those MAO inhibitors, you just can't do ayahuasca. There's is that an, an antidepressant reaction. you're talking about, an MAO inhibitor? I believe inhibitor. it's in most, yeah, I believe Mike, so. Like a Again, Prozac, yeah. Lexapro, that type of thing? I thought right. it was something Rob, against Chinese communism. Oscar, you're out of here. <laughs> Yeah, but you can, I mean, with the doctor's permission, you, of course, can stop taking yeah, it. Yeah, but we're all, we're all sad it, so. eggs. Yeah, but oh, you yeah. got yeah, yeah. to wean yourself off it. Otherwise, you got the bad day if you got to ease uh, off that stuff. I don't know. Oh, you, just, you just yell at your coworkers. Yeah, sometimes it's be, a bad uh, day for you. Sometimes yeah. it's bad for your coworkers. But nah, somebody's going to sure. have a bad yeah, that day. One day, no. Mike didn't take his meds. One day? You are approaching the nexus of sincerity and meanness. I love it. Yeah. This is awesome. Shut up, Rob. Shut up, Oscar. Uh, happy, birthday. happy birthday. So it's my birthday. I can tell him to shut up. To, uh, so you, you oh, do this. Wow. Thank you. Um, so you're first, and it's a series of uh, experiences. Go ahead. Um, yeah. So I fly to Ecuador. Everything that could possibly go wrong goes wrong, including like a fight in the airport between mm -hmm. people and the airline that mm -hmm. has canceled the flight for no reason yeah. and won't explain why they've canceled. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Again, yeah. when I tell the story to anyone from Latin America, they just like, nod. That's about and right. Yeah. Yes. You understand it. <laughs> Oscar, oh, my, right? Mike, they cancel because they want to cancel. And there's no <laughs> yeah. like, can you tell me when the next one? We'll let you know when we let you know. <laughs> I get it. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you're uptight he, by the time you arrive at the resort. It was hard, yeah. So I finally got there, and they're like, hey, you got an hour to throw your bag somewhere and then come over here, and you're going to drink this scary medicine, and you know whatever's going to happen is going to happen. So the first night, there were 27 of us, and we're in a circle by a campfire, and it's a very, very like strong ritual experience. So it's very important to them, the people who do this, the shamans, uh, that you follow protocol. So for example, when you get up to purge, aka either vomit or uh, use the facilities you um, right. you have to walk around the fire like a certain direction and then there's like tons of people there who work there who are out to help you so like if you raise your hand they'll help you stand and walk now here's where it gets weird for me i was always fully conscious i'm not saying i like would have driven a car but i 100 percent could have gotten in a car and driven it mm. the whole time i was on this thing mm. okay. i know other people who are locked in to a fantasy where they were like a panther in the jungle and they didn't even know where they were and they had to be like shaken awake. So I just cannot stress enough that your experience is going to be yours. There's like no stories with overlap from anyone I've talked okay. to. Okay. Mm. All right. Uh, if my luck, so I'd be like a, a llama stuck in the Andes. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just be screaming. You know, um, stop the monkeys. I would just say, do you have any more of this? It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Yummy. Yeah, mean, can I get a scoop of vanilla ice cream with that, please? Uh, and some toast. Actually, I have to mention, it is the most disgusting tasting thing I've ever had. I've what, had it, like I said, four times. Can you, oh, do you get a gag reflex flavor? when you uh, uh, when you take it? Jägermeister that's thick and stale. That's how oh, I would describe oh, it. Hey, that yeah, sounds it nasty. Is, oh, it is so disgusting. And they ask you to do this. And I did it, unfortunately, the first three times. I refused it on the fourth. But they have you snort tobacco juice before you do it to clear your penal oh, gland, which is apparently, yeah. God. Yes. Tobacco Again, juice is one of the most <laughs> nausea-inducing substances on the planet. Wow. That's, that's I, weird. I quit, yeah. 
I had quit smoking for 10 years, so I was very afraid when I did it, but it didn't. Yeah, I didn't have it won't do it. It'll just be, yeah. I chewed tobacco in the back of Mrs. Dino Masso's Volkswagen Bug, and I barfed my guts out. I mean, I haven't thrown up that much in my life, but I've been but those talking are two, about it a lot two lately. Two key stories lately. <laughs> yes, vomiting. Uh, so when you talk about the positive, that, that it just it was life-changing, uh, yeah. what, what did it do for you? Exactly. So I thought about how to make this as, as succinct as possible, and the way I would explain it is it makes you vulnerable, and then it also makes you unable to defend yourself with yourself. So your usual mechanisms of psychological denial, suppression, repression, uh, convenient forgetting, like whatever your trick is to keep yourself the, the victim or the like good person, like whatever that thing is. And again, therapy can get you here. That's why I keep saying you don't need this drug, but it does something that therapy does, which it, it makes you see yourself much more clearly, not even the way others see you, just like in this like ultimate sense and and so, great therapy, great therapy is about clarity. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh, so important just having, well, not necessarily accountability as much as clarity of thought, clarity of of mm. being true. What, what did you, you say? You might need more what? therapy. You have to be accountable <laughs> for what you've done as well. well no, did your therapist I, make you walk a certain direction before you went to the bathroom? No. <laughs> but I, when he talks about clarity, I I get it. And I'm uh, I, that leads me to the other question. You... Uh, I, I'm going to assume that when you were done with this, you reached out to your ex, right? Did you do that? Now you're getting to the part of the story that is going to make some portion of your audience think this guy is lying and the rest are going to say 100% I believe him. This is incredible. So okay. I'm just going to oh, wow. press it Good with that. tease. Yeah. And uh, as someone who's a professional writer and all these other things, I can tell you that uh, – there's plenty of more information I can share, but I'm going to give a very quick, tight version because I respect you and your show. So um, while I was on ayahuasca, I had one superhuman ability that I now permanently have, and it was the ability to check in on anyone I know and see their spinal cord. And based on how black to pure and white it was, I could tell how they are feeling about their life, not their day, but their life. The proof I have of this is I was taking notes as I was on it, and I wrote down the names of 10 people who had grayish to black spines that I love, and I wrote them an email the next day, and all 10 wrote me back to say, I have no idea how you knew this, but I have been more depressed, more angry, more whatever thing I told them than I've ever been in my life, and you helped me so much by talking to me about this. So one friend, for example, I said, your hatred of Donald Trump is ruining your own life. You need to stop focusing on politics. Put the newspaper away. It's not about being wrong or right. And he wrote me back and he said, my wife actually threatened me with a divorce a week ago because I won't stop talking mm. about politics. Who's his name, Michael Mara? <laughs> <laughs> I now look, I could I'm not gonna play that. I'm not gonna play the game of devil's advocate. I'm not gonna do that and say, you know, well, you could imagine everybody felt like that, you know, if you're a certain political mind. I get that. Were there any people you reached out to with positive analysis that was spot on? No, because um, I didn't. What I did with those people is I just wrote them and said, thank you so much for being a great friend. Thank okay. you for supporting me. Yeah, yeah. So I did. And again, this is what I said about the permanent change. I'm like an ambassador of peace and love now. I'm a total hippie. I just am. I, and I'll never go back. I believe that we should be nice to each other before everything else. I'm still a terrible monster when I argue with my wife. Ask her from this morning. Mm -hmm. Um so I still have all my personal problems, but the difference is I see how pointless the anger is. It made me so aware of oh, like wow. what a monster anger is. And so I see it differently. And again, I'm flawed. I just want to make this over and over again clear. I get go and, and yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. So it didn't like make me, oh, sorry, did you want to? I was going to say of the three of us, who has the darkest spine? Can you see our well, spines right now? I can't do it right now. I could actually do it later if you want. I can try it. I'd love that. Be um, in touch with sure. me. Yeah, I'd love yeah, that. Yeah, I have to I have to like close my eyes and meditate to get into that phase, but I, I But you like can. you don't need like you could call one of us uh uh like you could call Rob and talk to Rob and like do a, you know, drop a little analysis on us. Yes, I could and and I will go as far as Cuz we're disc jockeys I, first and foremost. Yeah. I have to tell you that. <laughs> yeah, 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 and yeah, this yeah, crap, yeah. we we lap this up like oh, Cheerios. Oh, it's the best, the best. We love this stuff. You know, we, we really, really yeah, yeah, do. Yeah. And I and I have to give you a little tip here that, uh, you know, my state of mind right now 
is as peaceful as it's ever been in my lifetime. It this truly man is. is lying. That is not true. Carla, that is absolutely Carla not wrote true. in to me directly. She said, please tell Mike he's in trouble. Yeah. Uh, about the food? Yes. How are you feeling now? Thanks. Thanks. I'm saying I'm in a really peaceful Ooh, state, and you I have s- to urinate all over it. I Oscar. see his Thank spine you. getting We're darker, the and, We're darker the and darker and darker. Jesus. All right. Well, we are out of time. I mean, yeah, I And don't can't. analyze Pony. We already know his, his yeah. spine so is black as So fascinating. So fascinating with this. We have to have you back on. I, but him, I want some closure. I want some closure on this. This guy hasn't given so, us. Yeah, so, so there's a huge detail I'm leaving out that I wanted. to What share, happened with the okay. X? Okay, so this is the really sad, weird version. And actually, Oscar oh, and Rob, no. when they had me on earlier, they know part of the story, but I'm going to retell it. So okay. I was right. married to a woman. She was born in Houston, Texas, to two parents from Thailand. Mm-hmm. Her parents are not U.S. citizens. She is by birth. She moved to Thailand with her parents when she was six months old. She came to America in 2010 to get a master's degree. I met her in the first year of her master's program, my second year of the same program. We started dating. We got married. We had a child, a son, and we went through this divorce. And the whole time we were going through the divorce, she was crying and saying, I can't split him with you. I can't split custody. And so I was told by many people, don't let her take him to Thailand. She'll never come back. And I said, That's totally BS. People don't do that. And so my lawyer told me, if you suggest that and you don't allow vacations, this will be hung up in court and you'll you'll seem like abusive and controlling is what she said. So she said, you should not do this. You should just trust her and let her go. So we got divorced and I for a birthday present to show my best foot forward. I gave her an early vacation with him. I said, you can go on vacation this year in October. She made plans to go to Thailand for two weeks. I made plans to go to Ecuador and do ayahuasca. While I was on ayahuasca, she had called me every day and FaceTimed me with my son, who I raised every single day of his life and love beyond earth. And while I was on ayahuasca, I got the message, you should share your son differently. When you get home, call your ex and let her move back to Thailand and just insist on summers and winters with your son. It's the right thing to do. I know that it hurts. I know you're going to cry, but it's the right thing to do. Cool. Um, she she hates America. She's not American. She doesn't know how to get along here. This divorce has trapped her, blah, 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 blah. So I come home and it's a Friday night. She's supposed to return on Sunday. I have dinner with my dad. Um, and I say, dad, I'm going to let her move to Thailand with our with my son. And he said, I actually think that's really nice and noble of you. However, he's only two. Why don't you do it for when school starts? So tell her that in when he's four, tell her, okay, next year you can move to Thailand and do this. And I said, oh, you know, that's actually a good idea. That, that makes sense. Two days later, she doesn't return. She keeps him. And I file a case with the State Department. Nothing works. And uh, that's it. But, but here's the part of the ayahuasca thing is it said, no matter what you do in this lifetime, you don't get to see your son as much as you want until he chooses to see you which will be either at 7, 12, or 18. And mm. it was very clear about that. And again, you guys are stretched for time. I'm not going to get into all this minutia of how those numbers have actually synced up. He turned 7 this year. But uh, yeah, it was the most supernatural experience yeah. I've ever had. Premonition of sorts. Yeah. It was absolutely premonitory. But at the same time, it was the the greatest journey in my life has been learning to let this happen and to not be angry about it and to not wake up every day. It's how I got remarried. It's how I have another kid. Any uh, contact at all from the ex? As long as they thought the state department was after them, they were religiously abiding by terms. As soon as I promised them that I dropped the case because they said that that would be when they would start sharing him, they started tapering off calls and now they've refused all emails and contact. And I haven't seen him since March and I write emails regularly. I mail cards to him every two weeks. And I love him. He's my son. I know he knows me. He's we FaceTime. He knows my name. He speaks English and Thai. Wow. It's wow. heavy. It's heavy. Fascinating. There, I mean, this is yeah. uh, this is amazing. I mean, God, we've, we've, we've eaten up. Uh, just just one, one last question. so much time right now. During uh, your time on ayahuasca, was there any guidance or vision about a possible sellout show for the 2022 TMOS Live program? I'm going to go home. I'm going to meditate and I'm going to think about the three spinal cords of you wonderful <laughs> gentlemen. 
Uh, maybe I'll even add Pony Boy, and uh, then I will also come up with the answer for that. But actually, I can already tell you. Yes, you're going to sell out. <laughs> I got to follow. All right, yes. we got to follow up with you, Mike. Uh, we do. We have to. Uh, we have to. We're up on a two breaks here. Yeah. Uh, but really fascinating. I mean, riveting. wonderful, Mike. Wonderful. wonderful Caught Mike. me you're by killed. surprise, and I mean, it's just what an amazing story. And uh, and I bet you have a wonderful uh, wife who's understanding about all of this and uh, continued. Good luck with this, and uh, I have a very open mind on all of this, and we have to go to break, and I don't even have time to let you say hi to anybody. So we'll check in with you next time, and we'll be right back on the Mike O'Mara hey, Show. It's me, California Twig. Hey, what are you doing here? When I'm not paying $47 for a gallon of gas, I get all of my Twitch needs from the Mike O'Mara Shopping Center. Click the banner at MikeOmaraShow.com and have your essentials delivered to the East Coast or the Best Coast or anywhere in between. Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. In an effort to offset inflation, the Federal Reserve has turned up the heat with the biggest jump in interest rates since 1994. The days of ultra-low rates are behind us, but there are still opportunities out there within the mortgage industry. For example, one-third of all mortgages are carrying PMI. And with the double-digit oh, yeah. appreciation last year, oh, yeah. you can refinance to remove the PMI or take some of that cash out for any reason. My good friend Mark Livingstone uh, let me know that when it comes to purchasing a home, uh, the mortgage. Let me let me redo that. I'm Please. sorry, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, Mark Livingstone indicated that when when you're purchasing a home, the mortgage lender you choose mm -hmm. can be the difference between winning or losing your contract on that home. Very true. So true. So you need to call Mark and his team at Cornerstone First Financial. Whether it's a purchase or refinance, call the good people at Cornerstone First Financial today. One of the longest running advertisers on our show. Call Cornerstone First Financial today. The number one choice of all TMOS listeners. Here's their number, 202-625-1221. That's 202-625-1221 or cornerstonefirst.com. Thank you, Cornerstone First Financial. That was fascinating, and now we got the news for you. Yeah. From the four corners of the World Wide Web and into your digital device, it's what you need to know. This is the homepage. This is the homepage, and we begin uh, with uh, Mr. Bean. Remember Mr. Bean in those movies? Rowan Atkinson is his name? Rowan, nice Rowan Atkinson is absolutely spot on, and uh, he has some thoughts on comedy and I, that I agree with. This is why I'm sharing this with you. Some people believe that comedians should always punch up, meaning they should uh, only make fun of the powerful people. I yeah. was talking about this the other day. Yes. When I saw the uh, the comedian we were speaking of. Uh, but not everyone agrees with that. Mr. Bean star Rowan Atkinson says, quote, what if there's someone extremely smug, arrogant, aggressive, self-satisfied, who happens to be below in society? They're not all in houses of parliament or in the monarchies. There are lots of extremely smug and self-satisfied people in what would be deemed lower down in society who also deserve to be pulled up. In proper free society, you should be allowed to make jokes about absolutely anything. He adds this, quote, It does seem to me that the job of comedy is to offend or have the potential to offend, and it cannot be drained of that potential. I agree with him 100%. Yeah. Every joke has a victim. That's the definition of a joke. Someone or something or an idea is made to look Ridiculous. So I thought that was just kind of cool because yeah. we were talking about it just the other day. Yeah. And, uh, of course, Mr. Bean, not really. Well, yeah, I mean, he he poked fun in that British way uh, that they yeah, do. You think of him as a silly comedian. Bean is you know, not my so. cup of tea, also, but I've, he's made some good. He was in The Black Adder, I believe, which was very yeah, funny. Absolutely. And yeah, also, very you funny know what? Guy. Great he face. Was, he was really good in the Scooby-Doo movie. He played the villain in the Scooby-Doo movie. And, you well, know, it's a uh, thankless job, he, but he did a great job. Uh, Cosby is another uh, comedian that we don't talk about it that much anymore. He might be a free man, but not everyone is convinced of his innocence. Jurors in a civil trial just ruled that he sexually assaulted a 16-year-old girl at the Playboy Mansion in 1975. Her name is Judy Huth, and uh, she's 64 now, and uh, she's $500,000 richer at Cosby's expense. The jury believed that Cosby intentionally caused her harm, reasonably believed that she was under 18 and was driven by unnatural or abnormal sexual interest in a minor. Cosby continues to deny 
any wrongdoing. So it just goes on and on. Not, and picture was was it 90 two. plus victims over his Yeah, some ridiculous right? yeah. Some amount. Some really high that's number. That's all he did. Yeah. Yeah. That's how he did it. I mean, he didn't date. He didn't do, you know, that's what he did. If, that's That was his MO on the road. And, uh, you know, and, and, that's, and it goes on and on and on. And you'll probably see more of these. That's yeah. the way it goes. In April, when we learn that uh, Brian Cranston and Aaron Paul will be returning there are uh, Breaking Bad characters, Walter White and Jesse Pinkman in Better Call Saul. Well, Bob Odenkirk let it slip that their appearances will be more than just a quick cameo. In an interview uh, with The Metro, he said, quote, seeing Brian and Aaron playing Walt and Jesse, it's not just one time, and it was great. The final season returns on uh, July 11th. There are only six episodes left, and uh, there's no word which ones Brian and Aaron are in. I'm sporadic with Better Call Saul. It's just I've watched every it episode. It meanders but too much, right? It, it is hot and cold. It is very it's much hot, hot and, and cold. cold and goes all over the place. And, and I it, root for Breaking it. Breaking Bad. I do too. I love Bob Odenkirk. I love, I love Bob great. Odenkirk. The yeah. three of them on the screen. That's compelling. Yeah, it'll be compelling. Breaking Bad. You ne- you couldn't miss an episode. No, you just couldn't. You know, I mean, very linear it in its storytelling, but there's so much going on in Better Call Saul. So yeah, I mean, it's just kind of it goes off on a tangent here and there, kind of like the second episode of The Old Man. Sorry, oh yesterday. dear, <laughs> sorry about that, everybody. Yeah, no, I'm still with it. Does Jeff Bridges love- have a black spine or a white spine? <laughs> I have no idea. Uh there's a line in the movie Tommy Boy about how someone could sell a ketchup popsicle to someone in white gloves. <laughs> well, it only took about 25 years, but here it is, because that's what we do now. You can finally have a ketchup popsicle. French's has partnered with a Canadian popsicle company See? to create... Uh, okay, calm down. To create a ketchup popsicle called the French's Sickle. It's described as perfectly savory... With a hint of salty What's sweetness. It called? The French's sickle. That's a clumsy portmanteau. It's horrible. The whole thing's clumsy. Yeah. Uh, the bad news is you can only purchase it in uh, pop up locations in the Great White North. Mm, I'd can't want get one. it down I'd here. I'd try it. Yeah. Well, they have provided a recipe so that you can make them at home, Oscar. Mm, nah. Well, they're also <laughs> doing another flavor that tastes like idiot. So try that. <laughs> there are only four <laughs> ingredients, so it won't be torture. You know, mm. and one of them is going to be ketchup. I, I hope so. Yeah. Tomatoes. Yeah. Thank you. Here's a safe, simple health test for older adults. Uh, I urge everybody to try this. You can try it at home or you can try it uh, right now. Okay. It doesn't matter. Uh, try to stand on one leg for 10 seconds. If you can't do it, uh, no worries. You just might die within a decade. Researchers in Brazil just published the results of a study that found that adults between the ages of 51 and 75 who can't uh, stand... Rob. Rob is... Uh, how's he doing? Oh, my God. He's on the brink. Yeah. Okay. He made it. I made it. Barely. Uh, made it. Without any additional support, See are you twice your as 64th, likely to die. See you at your 64th, Mike. <laughs> there's, uh, there's no direct connection between the balance and one particular disease, although generally those who failed were in poor health Many were obese, had heart disease or high blood pressure, so that might have contributed to the higher death rate among those uh, who had bad balance. I can only do it on one leg, on one side. I can't do it on both. Uh, really? So, strong yeah. side. You're not ambidextrous. Is that I'm, anything? That's oh. funny. Thank that's you. That's about it. Funny. If you fall Internet. down a lot, what you know? <laughs> Bitcoin. Yeah. yeah. Internet. I did it. I did it like when I read this, it TikTok. was maybe... Uh, <laughs> One o'clock in the morning because I stayed up super late last night, yeah. and I almost fell and killed myself. You know, you know what you need is the dude walker. <laughs> Gave him away. Um, yeah. All the walkers? Sold them. Yeah. What about your now, canes? Now a, uh, I, well, I got the can. I got yeah. all of those. Sure. Uh, now a little something, something. When you're a passenger in someone else's car, are you relaxed or are you white-knuckling it the whole time? For the average person, it's the second one. 53% of us always or often feel anxious about other people's driving. That includes people uh, who are in the car as well as other drivers on the road. We don't even trust the one person you'd expect us to. 63% of people in relationships say their partner's driving makes them nervous. So how do we act when we're in the passenger seat with no control? First, uh, 70% of us check to make sure everyone's in the car with a seatbelt on. 60% 60% also keep their eye on the speedometer, and 52% often find themselves wishing the person driving would just slow down. 
The poll also found the top times we speed are when we're running late for something. Duh. Duh. I find that if I drive fast, I get there quicker. When there's less traffic, get that. And when we feel like uh, we're just in a hurry. Okay. Uh, this poll was conducted by the Carlo O'Mara Center for Women Who Hate It When Their Husbands Run. There you go. Thank you very much. That's it. We got to take a break. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Uh, a quick break coming up. We're going to get a health update from Rob Spiewak. Good. And uh, and we will postpone uh, your wife's update till tomorrow. Well, maybe I'll have more to tell you. She you. is currently at the doctor's office getting her headgear off. So That's very, very exciting. Mm-hmm. We'll be right back on the Mike O'Mara Show. Oscar, we were discussing new digs at Podville. Pony is now going to be moving into your office. Just Pony, you're going to be uh, living with the boss. What do you think? No, um, no, um, no. On April 11th, Pony Boy Matt Bloom was asked to remove himself from his resident studio. Mm-hmm. That request came from his boss. I would have to disagree. With nowhere else to go, he appeared at the office of his friend Oscar Santana. Oscar, Oscar, Oscar. Can these two men share an office without driving each other crazy? Yes. Follow their misadventures <laughs> on the Mike O'Mara bonus show. Subscribe today and don't miss the exciting saga of Oscar and Pony, the pod couple. Ever forward, Mr. Bloom. <laughs> Mr. Bloom, welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show. Let's face it, if you need medical advice, you see a doctor. Yes. If you need legal counsel, you see a lawyer. Mm. You need to talk to experts. So, for investing, you've got to turn to Titan. Titan. Investing can be scary for a new investor. Growing up uh, or growing long-term wealth isn't a do-it-yourself project. No. And you shouldn't just sit back and shoot for the average returns. With Titan, you have a personal investment team that researches and invests for you so that you can aim to outperform the market while giving you a courtside seat to become a smarter investor along the way. With Titan, you get access to strategies similar to those used by the 1% without having to be ultra wealthy or pay hefty fees. All it takes is $100 to get started. Just deposit your money and select a portfolio you want to invest in. That's it. Check out Titan if you want to aim to be the smartest, wealthiest investor you've ever been. Go to titan.com slash TMOS to get $50 when you invest with Titan. You must go to this URL or you will not get that 50 bucks. And they won't know that we sent you. That's $50 when you go to titan.com slash TMOS and invest with Titan. This is a sponsor, uh, sponsored podcast ad. Oscar is a client yes. of Titan invested in the opportunities portfolio. So there we are. Welcome back, back, back. Uh, right before the show, we always have a little meeting and we yeah. kind of go over the uh, stuff we're going to touch base on. Uh, I said, we're going to talk about your wife today because she just re- recently went under the knife and, yes. uh, Rob at the very end said, I've got a little update on myself too, which means, uh, MRI results, it sounds yes, to me like. Yes, as a matter like, of fact, so- the MRI results rolled in last night from the clinic and I heard from my doctor this morning and, uh, what is fantastic is. A, I was pleased to say, see that I don't have to have another MRI. He saw what he needed to see. What did he see? I have no signs of iron overload. When there are iron deposits, this can be due to the iron overload condition, but it's also an indication of cancer risk of the liver. So absence of iron overload is a good education or a good indication your liver is doing okay. And here's a bonus. The MRI showed that I no longer suffer from fatty liver at all. My God. So, what wow. about scarring or or any uh, damage? They um, there is something called regenerative nodules that are normally quite benign. He's sending the MRI to the liver specialist for to get a double check mm-hmm. on it, but he said it's not anything I'd worry about at this time. So it's not Larray Cavern. No, no. Uh, so but I mean, and not a not not a tremendous amount of. Uh... Scarring and nastiness mm-hmm. on uh, the 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 liver. No, but obviously your body warned you, and uh, you and I responded. In time and I the, instantaneous. The thing I say to this is, folks, it's never too late. This is never too. You can correct it here. How about this? Wow. Remember when I was suffering from the anemia? My hemoglobin was around seven. As of this to week, explain what yeah, that is to everybody. Okay. Hemoglobin okay. is uh, the your blood count essentially, and make sure that if you're if you get down much below a seven in your hemoglobin count, they're going to give you a transfusion of blood, which is a temporary and quite severe fix to anemia for a blood loss. I was at a seven on March 17th, St. Patrick's Day. As of yesterday, uh, 
And the standard range is 13 to 17. So my hemoglobin is that of an average person now. Wow. Well, congratulations. That's uh, a... That, and uh, wait, there's one other thing that's amazing. This, this okay. totally All this from my ayahuasca? Mind. Yeah, all of it from licking the toad. <laughs> <laughs> wow. One trip to Ecuador and look at them. The amazing. hemoglobin uh, A1C is what they use to determine your risk oh, yeah, of seen, diabetes. Yeah, I've seen this on, uh, well, on the, all the commercials. They always Lower talk your about A1C. They always talk A1C. about A1C. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my A1C has been as high as a 10.3. Which means what? A 10.3. That well, means diabetic. Diabetic mm. is anything over 6.4. Holy smokes. Uh, if you're between 5.7 and 6.4, you're pre diabetic. I was up to a 10 when I was admitted to the hospital, solidly diabetic at a 7.7. My blood that I gave on Monday came back. My hemoglobin A1C is a 5.3. I'm no longer pre-diabetic. Mm. Oh, my God. It's oh, fantastic. Fan- no more insulin for you, well, right? we're going to have to work it because this is pre-diabetic with the insulin. But this can, once you lose the weight and work on your exercise and everything, this shows my body is still working. Can so, they? So when will they? Can they wean you off of that? He's going to start looking into. Remember, he gave me one year. He said we're going to try to get you off the needle in a year, yeah. and it's only been three months total. So I'm like ahead of schedule. Great news. Um, just happy, That's, happy all around. That what is the best. Best and birthday present. That is. That and is. I don't that need to, and a guest book for the show. Don't, don't yeah. need to get to the. Yeah. Uh, don't need to get to the liver specialist till November. I'm in the clear right now. Beautiful. And um, he asked me, he says, are you continuing to diet? I said, nah, I'm up to 340. And uh, no, I actually said, yes, I'm, I've continued to diet. Look at you. Cliff clean. So he's very happy with the progress we've made. You and should I, be happy. And I just got to re, restate it, folks. If you are worried about getting yourself checked out, if you have a sign of something going wrong, please go see a just doctor. Go. It's always reversible. Yeah, just if, go. I mean, what I've done in the past three months is staggering to me. It's amazing. Yeah, and you're still it, funny. Well, eh, I he mean, is. Like but, I thought, if you yeah, but his, his, way, his work funny. performance is still substandard, though. Well, he's working on that. Mm-hmm. Hey, I, hey, you still, you know, eyes on the prize with that. Like, of course, I mean, you kick him in the ass now more than ever. Yes, I'm done. The softball treatment is yeah. over now. Yeah, you're not done. I am now. You kick him in the yeah. ass. Yeah. Right. Yeah. right. Right. I'm talking to you, my Bolivian yeah. friend. Yeah. No. No. We had you, a big. We had a big. I. Big talk. I. I want I, high it, performance. I, I literally said to him, "I said I'm proud of you. We're look, we're in the in the back. Yes. Uh, and uh, it's awesome. Right outside of his office, and I said, "See these numbers? These numbers mean that it's time for you to up your game in the other faction of your life, which is." TMOS. Right. Right. Yeah. Yes. Right. So it By is. By the way, the title of today's show yes. Ayahuasca, Ayahuasca. Mm-hmm. Just twice? That's yeah. it. Twice. Yes. Okay. That's very it. good. Yes. But, I can um, help with that every day. And then you, you know, we hugged. Yes, we did. And then smooched. It was just that's, a little peck wonderful. on the neck, but it's it's really. It's amazing. It well, me was, to you because it was, you're taller. It was the yeah. in, in the crook of my neck, Mike, right here. Uh, <laughs> it, was, <laughs> it was so cool because that MRI was the last big piece of the puzzle. And to say I was nervous is an understatement because everything was looking good, and I just wanted to make sure that that backed it up. I'm and it so did. proud of you, and man. And it did. So we're that good. Is, this is huge. That, I mean, don't get you happy, changed though. your life. No. Don't go home. No, no. And then just say, oh, maybe I'll have a picture. Do you of- miss the, how much do you miss the hooch? The mood, Not much. Not at all. Food is hard, man. Food is really hard. Right, um, right. I, I think mean, it's harder than booze or, or anything else. Yeah, like and I, I don't Except think- for when I was on heroin. I missed that too. Yeah. Well, I, I- It was honey smacks, though. I was on- uh, Yeah, sugar smacks and heroin. I was on ayahuasca for a long time, and I knew I had a problem when I couldn't remember which direction to leave the circle. Got it, got it. Second mm-hmm. callback. Got it, got it. Uh, no, I don't, miss, I don't miss the booze. Um, it's What's the the great the food you miss like the most carbs? Oh, really? I'd love to make a sandwich. You did love look. A, I had a piece of bread for Santos, and I thought that Rob was going to take it from my hand. I was about to run. I showed you my paw. Yeah. I went like this. You're like, <laughs> I was eating that. I was eating that uh, that cheeseburger so today. Good. Double yes. cheeseburger. Double. Mm. You know, I know how bad it is, and uh, you know, putting that in, uh, in the American diet. Uh, you know, when you really do a deep dive, it's a. Uh, but by God. My God, you know. So well, I, you know, I'm going... you can do an occasional cheeseburger if you forego the roll. Yeah, what's, where's the fun in that? It's not a lot of fun. How great is that? <laughs> so I'm laughing with my uh, fat guy at the uh, drugstore when I was picking up my anti. 
<laughs> depressant. And uh, and he says to me, I, so I look at him, right? It, it's hard to see him completely through the window. And right. I look at him, and I said, I cheated on my wife today. And he goes, what? <laughs> like stopped, like stopped yes. him in his tracks. I said, Whoa. yeah, I had a cheeseburger and fries about five <laughs> minutes ago. <laughs> and he laughs. <laughs> Rated PG. It was, said, uh, it was said, uh, you ever step way outside your marriage? And then he smiled at you. All, all, <laughs> all chic aside, we love you, man. Love you, love guys. you Rob. Super you guys have stuck with me, and I really appreciate it. Thank you. Tomorrow, we find out about the other half and see how she's doing. So you know, much thread. Uh, Lots of thread. Lots going on in the Speedwack household. We'll take a break, and uh, we will come back with more fun and more thrills. You are listening to the Mike O'Mara Show. Whoa, whoa, hello. Has this ever happened to you? This guy saw me running. Please. He's closing the door, pretending like he hasn't seen me oh, as dick. I'm yelling. Step up to a new experience in airline travel that's made for a powerful, sophisticated business leader like you. I buy, you fly. Santana Airlines shows you the difference between getting where you're going and leading the way. It's not like we're in a hurry to go anywhere. Santana Airlines, where everyone is treated like a CEO. I'm a CEO. <laughs> I'm the president, she's vice president. And as you enjoy the synergy of the amazing skies, use what little bandwidth you think is actionable and circle back to the amazing deals at the Mike O'Mara Shopping Center. Leverage the value proposition of that <laughs> low-hanging fruit. At the end of the day, it's a win-win. Just pivot and click the banner at MikeOmeraShow.com. It's amazing. Hold that Welcome back to the Mike O'Mara Show, everybody. Whether you're going to be the groom... In a wedding party or a lucky guest, everyone wants to look their best for a wedding. Yes. We're getting into that time of year with a custom-fitted suit mm. from Indochino. You, my friends. Uh, that's like Jean-Pierre. Hello, yeah. my friends. Is it weird uh, when wedding season overlaps with birthday season for you? No, nah, because birthday season is always number one. <laughs> Yeah, Indochino is going to make you look great, feel confident, enjoy the big day without fussing over your clothes. Uh, listen, you can choose every detail on a suit, shirt, dinner yeah. jacket, and more at affordable prices that may surprise you. Indochino offers it all, and every piece is made to your exact measurements. And you can customize every detail. Plus, they're always adding new pieces, so you can stay on trend in style. Explore their relaxed yet refined approach to spring suits with their new spring pastels. These suits look great. They're gorgeous. And Indochino suits start from just $429. Shirts begin at $79 with all customizations included. Oscar has used Indochino yep. for years. Shirt and I jacket. love my suit. My blue suit is fantastic. Easy online shopping and a perfect fit, and you're going to love yours. If you've got a big day coming up, getting the perfect look is no big deal with Indochino. Get $50 off any purchase of $399 or more by using promo code TMOS at Indochino.com. That's $50 off a purchase of $399 or more at I-N-D-O-C-H-I-N-O.com. Promo code TMOS. Did I mention yesterday, uh, the uh, first of all, Oscar, how are your rats? What's the latest? Uh, on your the rat rats? cast. How are your rats? Well, I had to the know. Instructions because, I, mean, I received from the gentleman from I think it was Terminex. Yeah, his name Mike is Orkin uh, or Terminex, one of the two. His name is Theodore Ratman. He said Mike. that by Friday, which is tomorrow. No. Uh, tomorrow's Thursday. Tomorrow's Thursday. About two days from now, Friday, I can seal the rat cast hole. <laughs> rat uh, cast, but not beforehand. And I also can't wet the area where the hole is. With urine? With anything. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> because that deactivates the gas. So they're, so it's killing them. Supposedly. Though. Or, dro or driving them out of the hole. My rat for the rat cast still sees them be bopping around like it's Ratatouille too. You see, here's Electric the deal. Boogaloo. We used to, when we lived on the, the farming type area with my grandfather yeah. and grandma, they would get mice in the fall because they'd come in where it's warm. And the problem is, they is were snowbirds. If they, do, yeah, they were like from Indiana. And <laughs> when did you get Piac? When did you get Piac? I don't remember when you got Piac. Are you she Piac yet? I don't know if she's Piac yet. There. Oh, I love that. I love that new hairdo. You have to be. I careful. love that new hairdo. Is that a crew cut? <laughs> you have to be careful when they die because they'll stink up the place. But decon actually would dehydrate the mouse so bad that it would have very little odor when it was dead. 
I don't think the, you worry about that. I, yeah. I, I, that. I don't think that can be the thing you worry about. They're telling you, wait a couple of days yeah. and then seal yeah. up the hole. Check your kitchen for Go scat. Crazy. Like, to, if the rats had got... Do the rats ever get inside? Is there anywhere they gnawed into the house at all? <laughs> oh, yeah. Do they get inside? Yeah, they got Do they in. get Remember? in? They buy the... They the one the rat on our pillow? Really? Two years ago? Yeah, That's, I remember that. I mm-hmm. live a terrible <laughs> existence. <laughs> well... This is my life. Uh, so we'll have to wait till Monday to find out if yes. maybe... But the rat cam... Uh, more pictures, please. Well, I... Love uh, to see... It's uh, Direct you know. TV channel 287. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I just wanted to say down here, one of the things we always wait for, right about now, it's official. Any people that are the snowbirds, as you went, uh, yes. you just mentioned, are officially back north now. Okay. Probably a lot earlier. But, but the roads are much less traveled. With that said, we still have senior citizens and we have rednecks down here. Okay. So yesterday, getting off one of the exits... Uh, I come upon this, uh, a slow exit off on this particular road down here in Southwest Florida where I see the police lights. I'm like, oh boy. Now I know exactly, I look, I see the results of this accident Mm. and I know exactly what happened. What happened was up ahead of me, I see the wheels up above the ground, which means the car is flipped. I see an SUV with four wheels in the air. Then I see a work truck that is driven down into the ditch. And then when I get past the accident, I see a small like Corolla-like sedan (laughs) that is completely crushed in in the back. And I see a minivan with all the front damage. And I know exactly what happens. You columboed uh, it. You were able to look at it and reverse engineer what happened. Se- and by the way, uh, you don't see him often, but the senior citizen, the old minivan, mm-hmm. is is a granddaddy's car for the kids when they come like down. A, like a Dodge you, Caravan? Yeah. It was obvious what happened, okay? That, uh, you know, Festus is driving around in his uh, caravan from 1985 and, you know, doesn't realize that, uh, you know, I have to, I'm not trying to be racial or anything, but he doesn't realize that the young worker who's going to slay the dragon probably uh, is just catching up to traffic and slamming his bra- his brakes on. And so he hits, and I saw the guy standing outside of his car. Mm-hmm. So his name was, uh, use any Hispanic name you want no, to use. Oh, he's my brother's name, Jose. Jose is standing outside of his car that's been damaged. And then who really reaped the the terrible uh, situation was the traffic in back of them is the work truck that drives into the ditch. And then Muriel, who's just going to her doctor's appointment, rolls over her Ford Explorer. Well, my point is, folks, if you drive down. Pretty good. Pretty good. good. If you come to South Florida this time of year, just be careful on the highways and byways. Yeah. Because it is. I told Carla. I talked to her right before the show. I said, please be careful out there going to pick up Michael because it is bat s crazy Mm -hmm. out here. And uh, it's just a combination of people speeding more. getting out of the Dairy Queen. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, it's horrible. It's horrible because I had rats in my car. It was. Uh, oh, no. It was crazy. It was nasty. Hey, uh, it's sound. It's sound. Sound. Sound town. All the, the snowbirds are back. Show offers up as all the all the this snowbirds guy. are back in sound what? town. What right? happened? The what? what? You were you. When you have a technical error running your board, that supersedes anything coming out of your mouth. Let's start again. Let's start from the very beginning and see how we can do this. All right. Okay? Okay, give me the thing. So you don't have to worry about closing the bit. Okay. I'll do that. Okay. Done it for 40 years, okay? Uh, yeah, there were rats all over my car from Dairy Queen. Oh, I don't want to slander the good people at Dairy Queen. We got to take a break because Sound Town is coming up, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you enjoy that because Rob has curated a group of fantastic sounds that you're going to love, even though I can hardly hear the drums. But we'll be right back. The latest bonus show offers up a smorgasbord of laughs. If you haven't heard it, here's what you missed. What the f***? What What's the actual f- Well, I mean, I'm tired of it as well, let's be honest. Had a couple of glasses of wine last night. I uh, didn't. I'm fairly sure that my dad and mom have done ayahuasca <laughs> in their own time. <laughs>
Is that when they decided to hang that picture in the nah, bedroom? Just- Rob eats tater tots, only he limits himself to one <laughs> plate of tater tots a month. And did you know yeah, that the, the Burger King and the Dairy Queen were actually married? My mom used to make the most wonderful dessert. I don't know if you've ever had it. It's a urinal cake. I think a Whopper is yeah. a treat. Every TMOS bonus show has zesty comedy flavors seared in and is grilled to perfection. Order up a subscription today at MikeOmeraShow.com. You clap, I'm going to break your hand. Thank you. Uh, welcome back to the Mike O'Mara show. Oh, I love my Harry's. Loved it this morning. Oh, yeah. Got a new one. I put a new a uh, new blade cartridge oh, in there. Are you good for ten months now? Uh, I ordered my uh, my new blades, and they came in a couple of weeks ago. And uh, I just replaced them, and it's so smooth. I just think their blades get better and better. Uh, listen, don't mess with my morning routine. I use all the good stuff. I use the body wash. I use the shave gel. I use the razors. I love Harry's. Everything I like involves their amazing products. I use it all. All? Razor, face wash, body wash, the best shave gel. Uh, look, the blades are great. I swear you won't know when to change them. And uh, how about this? First time Harry's customers can redeem a starter set for just three bucks at harrys.com slash TMOS. That includes a five blade yeah. cartridge, a weighted handle, foaming shave gel, and a travel cover to protect your blades on the go. That's a $13 value, all for just $3. And wait till you try the newly designed handle. I haven't tried that yet. It's killing it's me. I've got it. I have like, I have 12 handles around now, the house. the new guy, I, you feel I used to as well. You feel it. Really? Yes. Yeah, it was vodka. Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Can, Can you, you feel it? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, anyway, the best of the handle. Feels so good. Uh, you can't wait to shave again. I'm not a monster. I just have great taste. That's all there is to it. Remember, new look, same incredible offer. Uh, there's really never been a better time to give Harry's a try. Harry's. Just go to harrys.com slash TMOS today to get your starter set for just $3. That's harrys.com slash TMOS, people. Sound. 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 We call this stereophonic sound. Sound town. I know yesterday we talked a lot about John Cena. Today I'd like to throw a little love to The Rock. Cool. There was a school for disabled kids. And, you know, my wife works with special needs kids, so it means a lot to me. They sent an invitation to Dwayne The Rock Johnson to come to their end of year party. And he couldn't make it, which is not to be, you know, not to be unexpected. Mm -hmm. I mean, he's a very busy man. But what he did do is made a video for them and sent every student in the class a gift pack that included an Xbox. Whoa. Oh, that's sweet. But anyway, that's very, very here's cool. part of The Rock's video and I believe the reaction very of the special. teacher. Here. I love the video. I loved everybody's performances. I also want to take a moment to shout out all the incredible student peers. All right, Yours stop truly. The Rock. Yeah, stop. stop The Rock, please. Uh, okay, on is, video, is, yes, what we yes. see from our studio, our vantage point, there's Michael. Hi, Michael. And he's Hi. got a cartoon-sized lobster. Yes. Mm. In his hand, lobster. that's a lobster. lot. It's dripping on me. All right, buddy boy. Thank you. Is that is it treat birthday? day? Is it treat day? Is that birthday dinner? Yeah. Oh my yeah. God! Thank you, Mama. Thank you very that's much. That's so sweet. Oh, oh, that is come so in here. Sweet. Good and for share you. Share the look. Yeah. Look at the look. This is the look What's I got. What's the look? This is the look. Look right here. Go ahead, lean it's in. It's lobster in. time. Mm. All right, go ahead. Oh yeah, yeah she's, she's upset. Yeah. She's upset. She's upset. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah, because she was going to treat you tonight. Yeah. But you treated yeah. yourself. Yeah. Hi. Hi. You ate like a hog. Hi. Thank you. Oh. I ate like a hog. You, you, We're finishing you ruining, the show. You ruined birthday dinner. Oh. Okay. No, no not at all. Mm. I didn't. I what didn't. he did is he, he did, Rob. No, he elevated birthday dinner. <laughs> oh, okay. Are you hungry? Yes, very of much cor- so. Of course you are. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> all right. Thank you. I'm finishing the show. Okay. <laughs> Shut the door behind you. Shut it the was door. just a snack. That's all. all right. You know, okay. it's it's an appetizer. Oh, Mike, this is disappointing. All I have is the live version of Can You Feel It by the Jacksons. <laughs> oh. No. So horrible. Doesn't work. Sorry. Well, the other one doesn't work either. It's just a horrible no. song. I know. I know. I really am in trouble. No, you're not. Yeah, because she had this. God. She had a, a wonderful like. Yeah. You know, okay. And you've ruined. I understand. What I you should it. do is have her put by myself all day. <laughs> you should have her put her hand on your stomach and tell her, "Can you feel it? Can you feel it? it? Can you, Can feel, you it? feel my cheeseburger?" <laughs> 
<laughs> All right, turn this off, All right, please. Here's The Rock one more time. This is a reset. I love the video. I loved everybody's performances. I also want to take a moment to shout out all the incredible student peers. Yours truly was once never part of the National Honor Society <laughs> because you guys are way smarter than I am. This day means so much to us just because we got to see their faces light up. This is for real. They're gonna have this memory for the rest of their lives, and this is the best day of my career. There's nothing better than someone using their power and for given. good like that, isn't that? Amen. Way to go, Rock. Good Love job. It. Now, I am an old queen. No one will deny this, but I had read about this. I didn't know it existed until it surfaced on YouTube a few days ago. Margaret Hamilton, who played the Wicked Witch of the West in the original Wizard of Oz in 1939. Did Miss uh, Gulch. Yeah, she played Mrs. Gul Elmira Gulch and also the Wicked Witch of the West, did a segment on Sesame Street that after they filmed it was deemed too scary for kids. Mm. So really? they shelved it. But she had the green facial makeup and everything. Now, this is some 30 wow. years after they made the movie. Wow. You're not Queenie for this. This is the Wizard of Oz. This is pop culture, like, yeah. God. It's right cinema. Here. So actually, this is 37 years after the movie was made. This is 1976. What's so cool about this is she sounds exactly like she did in the original movie. Here's a small clip. You can watch the whole episode on YouTube, but here's Margaret Hamilton. Lady, look, you got to be more careful with this broom. You know, th wait a minute. It's my room. Well, that may be true. Careful with anything. You do, because yes, I, I have it. that thing almost came, no. right out of, it came out of the no. sky and almost hit me right in the head. Well, that was the wind. It was not me. Well, you have to be more careful. Well, I am. That doesn't do with me. Careful. Let calm me down. Down. Calm down. You can't it. have the Let broom. Me have it. Until All right, hold on. Hold on. Stop. Stop. What's the actor doing? They're, they're, they're talking, talking over, all over it. Yeah, I think no, there's a no, lot of improv. No, he's talking all over her. Yeah. He's ruining it. No, Who I was the actor? I think there, are, there was actually two Sesame Street regulars that were talking to her. I think one of them might have been Maria. It's hard to tell what's happening, though. She is, I have no idea what's happening. Okay, what happened is, if you watch the entire plot, the difficult plot line for the toddler is this, is that... She drops her broom out of the sky, and according to lore, a witch can't have her broom back if it's being touched by someone else. Ooh. So she's trying to recover her broom, you see. But let's see how it finishes let up in a few seconds. You can't have the let broom until it. you call. Let me have it. You can't have the broom until you show me a little respect. Oh, yes, I can. No, you can't. Oh. oh, I forgot. I can't so much as lay a finger on that broom as long as somebody else is holding on to it. Not bad to be the able back to conjure end up makes that sense. voice. The back end. But yeah. as a child who grew up with that film and was terrified, we all she were. was terrified. Yeah. Yes. She was yeah. the she's always been the definitive witch. Mm -hmm. By the way, I've seen the trailers for the new Ethan uh, Ethan Hawke movie. Mm. I don't know if you've seen the trailers mm -hmm. for that. Oh my god. <laughs> Talk about a scary horror movie. <laughs> I think it's called The Black Phone. Oh boy. Scary, oh. scary, scary. We kids. had a black phone at WJFK. Whenever it rang, it was Miss Bobby. Yeah. It wasn't Tom Gavin. <laughs> No, he didn't have. That was one number he didn't have. Oh, gotcha. Okay. okay. And mm -hmm. let's close with this, Mike. I know you love your air travel. American Airlines is cutting back. Do you find oh, this ooh. sad? Oh, yeah. It's surprising. Yes. Let's close with this. American Airlines has announced that it will no longer service Toledo, Ohio, due to a pilot shortage, despite being the only commercial carrier to service the city. So if you have to go to Toledo, I have even more bad news. <laughs> So I guess we won't see you in Toledo. Oh, what a shame. Yeah. That's terrible. Oh, my God. That's it. We got to get out of here, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thanks to our wonderfully esoteric guest, so good. Mike Oppenheim. He'll be back uh, to uh, tell us the color of our spines. We might have to follow. I, I need to follow up with that guy a little bit. I, I need a you private know? reading. Private reading. And what happens yeah. between you and the lady in the room stays between no, you and the no, lady. I, I just, I, I'd rather know what my spine's all about, yeah. and then divulge it to you. I don't need, I don't need, you know. I don't think I need to talk to him until I'm able to stand on one leg better. Uh, we got to get out of here. Uh, we'll see That's you. That's your spine. Uh, That's the problem. Tomorrow, ladies and gentlemen, uh, for Rob Spiewak and Oscar Santana, Michael Mara saying so long, everybody. Bye bye. Ciao ciao. Want more? Make sure you check out the Michael Mara Bonus Show. Get it at michaelmarashow.com. Michael Mara, Radio Entertainment. It's all a big nothing. What makes you think you're so special? So, what do you want me to do? Drop my paints or fire a rocket? Ah! It's in the hole! You know what you are? A hoot. With a capital H, that's what you are. I see dead.